With investing analysis on today's healthcare headlines, this is your Market Checkup. I'm Allison Southwick, joined by David Williamson and Max Macaluso, healthcare analysts here at The Motley Fool. Today we've got a lot of stocks popping that we are going to talk about, but first, of course, we got to talk about Mako. Stryker is in a deal to buy Mako Surgical for $1.65 billion. Mako's stock shot up roughly 80% on the news, so the market loved it. Max, do you think this was a good deal for Mako? Yeah, I, I think it's a good deal for Mako. It's an even better deal for Mako shareholders. I think everyone is familiar with the story at this point. Mako uh, makes the real robotic arm for hip and knee replacements, and it's really struggled to pick up sales on its road to eventual profitability, so it's still not, not making a profit. And the 2.3% excise tax from the Affordable Care Act has has been a major headwind to the company. So then, Stryker investors did not like the news. The stock slipped a little bit today. What do you think of the deal for Stryker? You know, I think it's a good deal. Stryker is paying a bit of a premium, Alice, and you usually see when there's a buyout like this, the acquirer does get bid down. 2% really isn't much in the grand scheme of things. Uh, I think there are definite synergies here as well, you know, based on what Stryker's core competency is. It is a little bit of a surprise. Stryker was actually rumored at one point to be building its own in-house competing system. I guess they decided it was easier to go out and get Makos. Uh, they had also recently talked about competing with uh, Johnson & Johnson and Zimmer, uh, more about hip uh, placement over actual design. We saw some issues with uh, Johnson Johnson with some recalls. The hips were actually slightly misplaced and that's what caused a lot of the, the defects. Um, I also think if you, if you look at Stryker, they just ha they have an amazing sales force and Mako's had some tough trouble uh, with sales lately. They, they got a lot of the low hanging fruit and then stalled out a bit after that. I, th I think uh, Stryker will have a really good job reinvigorating this product line. All right, so Max, bottom line, what does this mean for Mako shareholders? I'm a Mako shareholder, so I want to hear this. Well, so the deal isn't 100% final yet. Shareholders still need to approve it. But, you know, shares of Mako are trading close enough to the $30 per share price that Stryker is aiming to pay. So now may be a good time to just wave goodbye. And David, Mako wasn't the only stock to get a bump off of the news. No, today. it was not, Allison. Uh, Hanson Medical, uh, which makes the Sensei robotic catheter system, was up uh, double digits, about 10, 15 percent on the news. I, I just want to warn Hanson shareholders, just because your company makes robotic medical devices does not mean it's on its way for a 10-figure buyout or any buyout at all. I, I'm actually, when you take a look at Hanson, I'm really concerned about it. They, um, they really only have enough cash on hand to last about three quarters. Sales peaked in uh, 2008, and it, they've basically trended down to flat ever since then. Um, it's in a lot of trouble. Do not think a buyout is coming if you're investing in Hanson. That, that stock is a stay away to me. All right, and then for our next headline, we get to segue uh, as a, for a company that did not get any buyers either. This is for <laughs> Clovis Oncology. Bloomberg is reporting that the company was considering a sale, but it didn't get any suitors. And the stock, um, it's actually quadrupled this year, and apparently there's a lot of optimism around uh, some of its lung and cancer, ovarian cancer drugs. Mm -hmm. So why no buyers, David? No, it's sad, right? This is the other side of the coin to make. They, they hung a for sale sign out, and no one came to their open house. Yeah. Uh, you know, they had the, the fresh baked cookies and everything. But, um, you know, I, I said we talked about Clovis actually on a show talking about uh, their ovarian and breast cancer drug that... Um, I, it, I'd be skeptical if there would be interested buyers, and, and it looks to be that way. Uh, it's not like their assets aren't interesting, but they're an early stage development, and the company is expensive. It's a $2 billion stock uh, based on where it is. I, I just, uh, you know, th these drugs are probably four or five years out if everything goes well. It, it's a premium to pay uh, in the meantime. So, no buyers today. What should Clovis do next? Well, I think Clovis should develop these drugs. Uh, they're exciting products. Uh, the one, the PARP inhibitor we talked about worked in the uh, uh, breast and ovarian cancer with the BRCA mutation. Uh, my concern there is, though, it is an early stage development. Uh, there are a couple in late stage development. Biomarin is one in uh, phase two that actually looks to be the b most potent of the bunch. So. I'm a little concerned that Clovis could have a Me Too product that gets to the market late, but these drugs seem to work, and I, and I do think uh, it could be a nice asset. Uh, CO uh, 1686 is for non-small cell lung cancer with people with a certain uh, mutation as well. I think this is a bit more of a, a lucrative market. Uh, it has seen some, you know, again, this is early stage travel, but it looks like it has some long-lasting anti-tumor activity. 
Uh, I think they're just going to have to develop these drugs, de-risk them a bit, and really search out licensing deals. I, I think it will be a lot easier to get a big pharma or a big biotech interested in uh, paying some milestone payments for development, maybe helping fund development, and then uh, giving some royalties on sales if they're ultimately successful. All right, well, that covers it for the headlines. As promised, we're going to get to some of the stocks that are popping today. The first one we're going to look at is Oncothyreon. It popped 20% today. So, David, not to <laughs> get you to keep talking more here, but um, what was the news? Here. Well, Oncothyreon, uh, as you said, was up 20%. Its partner, which is the German Merck, uh, Merck KGAA, it's a subsidiary, Merck Serrano, uh, will advance the drug formerly known as Stimuvax into a new phase three trial. Now, this is a drug uh, that actually failed a phase three trial at the end of 2012. Uh, you know, I, I'm not totally sure why they're advancing it. It looks like they data mined extensively that trial and saw a population that they liked. There's just there hasn't been a really good track record for drugs succeeding after uh, extensive data mining. I wouldn't really be too excited about the outcome of this trial. And again, it, if it is successful and and there is a benefit, it, it might not be that strong given that it didn't work in the larger population. So. Uh, it, it's a lung cancer vaccine, it, similar to the way uh, Dendrion has Prevenge, which is a prostate cancer vaccine. It, it helps your body fight um, metastatic cancer. But my concern is if there isn't a huge benefit, it may not be able to gain traction against conventional treatments, which is a problem Dendrion has faced getting Prevenge uh, to compete against Zytiga and uh, Xtandi, which doctors are more comfortable with. Uh, and in, in uh, this case for uh, Francothyreon, there are uh, PD-1 immuno-oncology drugs that are in late-stage development that look like they are having significant outsized results as far as efficacy. So uh, not only are there some conventional treatments it would have to go against, but there's another wave of uh, immuno-oncology behind it. Uh, I, I'm just really concerned about the overall success of this trial. Shares are up today. I, I think it's a stay away. I wouldn't hop on this bandwagon. All right, so they didn't deserve the pop is the bottom line here. Well, it, it's exciting that I guess they're getting another shot, you know, another another swing at the drug development pinata with this drug that most people had written off, but I don't think they're going to hit the target. All right, then the next talk we're going to look at that popped today is shares of Pacifo Pacific Biosciences of California. It's a gene se sequencing company. It shot up about 70% today after announcing a deal with Roche. So, Max, what are some of the highlights of this deal? Well, there are two surprising things here, Allison. First of all, Pacific Biosciences is up big didn't see that coming. The second thing is that Roche is actually doing something, right? I mean, we, we've heard a lot from them. Uh, they supposedly went after Alexion. A deal didn't happen. Last week, there were rumors they were interested in Biomarin. Haven't heard anything since. Uh, last year, they tried to acquire Illumina, which is another gene sequencing company. It would have cost them a few billion dollars. But they had to walk away from the deal because they didn't want to increase the, uh, the amount they would pay for it. Which brings us to Pacific Biosciences today. I think this is a smarter way for Roche to get into the gene sequencing um, segment and to kind of merge that with their expertise in diagnostics. Uh, to give some color on the deal, $35 million upfront and around $40 million in milestone payments to Pacific Biosciences. So it sounds like you think this was a good move for Roche. I think it's a good move for, for Roche and um, it, it's a great way for them to, to really just test out what they want to do with gene sequencing and how they're going to incorporate that. I think the acquisition of Illumina would have been a much more expensive experiment. So then Pacific, it was actually Pacific, not Pacifica, it was actually one of the worst performing healthcare companies of 2012. So will this deal keep them off that list for next year? I think it will, but uh, this is just one deal and one major customer. So uh, Pacific Biosciences really needs to, to just boost its sales uh, in, in other ways in order to sustain this growth. All right. Well, I think that covers it for today. If you're looking for more investing analysis on today's healthcare headlines, we've got you covered at Fool.com. For David and Max, I'm Allison Southwick. Thanks for watching.